Now, some people struggle intensely with gender distress, some from a very early age, and they should be treated with the utmost compassion and care and receive all the care and support and treatment they require. Adults should, of course, in this country, be free to dress and present in any way without fear or discrimination and fully accepted. But in this country, our law is based on facts and evidence and material reality. It shouldn't be used to embed contested and unevidenced ideologies, ideologies that can sometimes be harmful. And I will explain why I do believe this ideology is so harmful. Children are now being taught in schools that there are more than two genders, that they can change their gender. They are being told by trusted adults that if they are gender non-conforming, itself a regressive concept that we threw out in the 1980s, then that might mean they were born in the wrong body. In one classroom, children are being taught the facts of sexual reproduction, and in another, that women can have penises and men can have periods. They're being told to suppress the evidence of their own eyes by saying that a boy is now a girl, a girl is now a boy, or neither boy nor girl. Vulnerable children, those particularly who are autistic, same-sex attracted, or have other mental health conditions, latch on to gender theory as an explanation of why they might be different, why they don't fit in. These children then look up trans and non-binary online. They're drawn in by adults they don't know on Discord and TikTok who tell them how to obtain and inject cross-sex hormones. They follow YouTube stars who glorify surgical transition. Schools jump into transitioning children, changing their names and their pronouns, celebrating their new gender status publicly, sometimes without informing their parents, cutting them off from the people who care about them most. There has been a 15-fold increase in children referred to gender clinics and an exponential rise in the number of trans and non-binary identified children in school. And let's remember the ultimate consequences of transition. Infertility, loss of sexual function for life. For girls, permanent facial hair, a deep voice, male pattern baldness, and lifelong health problems. This is a failure of safeguarding. It's not biology, it's ideology, and in many cases, it's indoctrination. It's not open-minded or compassionate to teach a child that they may be trans or non-binary. It's not open-minded or compassionate to encourage a child to look up gender on the internet and to talk to adults who ask them intimate questions and for intimate pictures. It's not open-minded or compassionate to tell a child that their teenage problems can be solved overnight by a rejection of their own body and a denial of their bio biological sex. We need to wake up. Gender theory is not the next frontier in the culture war or a new battle for civil rights. It's an unevidenced ideology that is causing harm to women, to children, and to people who are gay and lesbian.